in this video, we're going to be tackling the leak code question, subarray sum equals K. If you are not familiar with this man right here, this is Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is one of the richest people on the planet. One of the most successful investors in existence. And he credits his success with a principle called the inversion principle. If you're not familiar with the inversion principle, it basically means whenever we want to achieve something, we should oftentimes look at what we should not do. And in this video, we're going to look at what we should not do with subarray sum equals K to figure out what we should do in an interview situation. But let's just go ahead. Let's start off small. Let's not get too carried away. Let's just take a look at what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find the individual subarrays, the arrays that exist within this array right here that add up to two. And when we look at our array right here, we basically find two subarrays that equal two. We have one and one on the left side right here, right here. And then we have the one and one on the right side. So we have one and one and one and one as the two subarrays. But thankfully, we don't have to actually return the subarrays themselves. We can just return the number of subarrays, which in this case is going to equal two. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to start off with the worst of the worst algorithms. But for these very bad algorithms, I'm just going to show you how they work on the whiteboard. You don't have to actually type them out. First algorithm is going to be n cubed. How exactly does an algorithm even become n cubed? Well, what happens is you have three for loops. And why do we even have three for loops? There's lots of whys here. It's almost too bad to be true, to, so to speak. So you have two for loops, and these for loops are iterating through the elements just like they would any other nested for loop. The second for loop is going to iterate through these elements, and then it's going to inch its way up. And what this third for loop is doing is through each boundary, through each pointer that we have here, it's going to iterate through all of those numbers between these two boxes, between these two pointers, and it's going to sum them up so that we can get the sum of all of these subarrays. Say a lot of iterations. How exactly do we make this better? What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this pesky third for loop. These two for loops up at the front they're doing all the work. They're the ones getting all of the combinations. And this third for loop, number one, it's causing a lot of unnecessary iterations. Each time that we want to calculate the sum, we have to go through all of those numbers. Not only that, but it's throwing away all of the previous work that we just did. We can use our previous values to calculate our current values. So what we'll do is we'll just create a simple piece of state, a simple variable that will store all of our previous sums so that we can use the previous sums to calculate the current sum, getting our algorithm down to n squared. And now finally, the grand finale. We're going to get this algorithm down to a blazingly fast linear runtime. This is as fast as it gets and this is as fast as we're ever gonna get this algorithm. How exactly is this going to work though? Well, we're getting it down to n, so that automatically means we have to get rid of that second for loop. And that second for loop, while it was slow, did do a lot of work for us. It calculated all of the possible combinations on the fly. How are we going to do that without it? Well, we're going to have to use a more beefy form of state. We're going to have to use a hash map. And we're going to have to use a hash map because without that second for loop, we're going to have to remember all of the possible subarray sums because we have to get this thing right in one pass. And what this hash map is going to do is it's not only going to keep track of the subarray sums in a key value form, but it's also going to keep track of the frequencies for us so we can return them after we get to the end. 
And now for the final walkthrough, I'm going to walk through this whole entire algorithm with you and explain everything step-by-step step in very simple terms. The very first thing that we have to do, we have to do this before we can do anything else is we have to add zero and one to the hash map. The reason that we have to add zero and one to the hash map is because the very first element might be equal to the max that we are searching for. So we have to account for that scenario. Once we've gotten that out of the way, we can finally begin iteration and don't get it twisted. This algorithm is actually very, very simple. At each iteration, we're going to do these three simple steps and they don't change. We're gonna take the current element that we're at and we're going to add it to the sum of all the previous numbers to give us the prefix sum. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that sum that we just calculated, we're going to subtract it by the max that we are searching for, K, and then we're going to look for it in the hash map. Then we take the current sum that we just calculated and we add it to the hash map with the number of times that it occurs. So let's go ahead, let's jump right into the very first iteration. And there's no other previous numbers to calculate a previous or prefix sum from. So our current sum is just going to be one in this case. And just like these steps outlined below, all that we're gonna do is we're going to take our sum and we're going to minus it by K the max that we're searching for, which is two in this case, and that's going to yield us, you guessed it, negative one. We're gonna take this negative one and we're going to search in the hash map. Does negative one exist anywhere in the hash map? No, it doesn't. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to add our sum and move along. The sum is equal to one, it occurs one time. We go ahead, add one and one to the hash map. We can move on to the next element. When we move on to the next number, we're going to reach one. And what we're going to do is we're going to recalculate our prefix sum. And when we add one plus all of the previous numbers, which is just one in this case, we're going to come out with two. And just like before, what we're going to do is we're going to take our sum that we just calculated and we're going to minus it by the max that we want. We want two. It's going to give us zero. So. We come out with zero, we're going to search the hash map for zero. And we actually do find a zero in our hash map. And what we're going to do is we're going to pluck out that value, that frequency that we stored in the hash map, and we're going to add it to our count. And we're going to store the count under a variable. So we're going to add one to our count. But also we cannot forget before we move on to the next iteration, we're going to have to add our new sum to the hash map. So we finally move on to the last number. And the previous numbers before the last number add up to two. And when we add one to our previous numbers, we get the prefix, which is going to equal, you guessed it, three in this case. And when we take three minus K, the max that we are looking for, which is going to equal two, what we get is one. And one is a match. We have another match. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pluck out that value. We're going to take the frequency. We're going to add it to our count. And then finally, last but not least, but this doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead, add our sum. Our sum is equal to three. It occurs one time, but the algorithm ends right here. Let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's code this up. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the very first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class. I'm going to call this solution. This solution class is going to house our method. This method is going to return an int. It's also going to be called subarray sum. It's going to take in an integer array called nums and it's also going to take in a single integer called k. Let's go ahead, let's start talking data structures. We're going to need that hash map and the hash map is going to have to store an integer which is the subarray sum as the key and the frequency also as an integer and it's going to be stored as the value. I'm going to call this, instead of map, map is sort of ambiguous. I'm going to call this prefix sum count just to be a little bit more explicit what it's doing. And we're also, remember, very important, you have to initialize it with a zero and a one, otherwise you're not gonna be able to handle that edge case I was talking about. Uh, need to initialize some state. So we're going to have an integer called prefix sum. This is the actual 
prefix. This is the sum of all the numbers before that we're going to calculate. And we also need to keep track of the count. The count is the most important because that's what we're actually returning. We can get away with a very simple abstracted for loop here. We don't need to bring out like a whole entire uh, custom for loop. We can go ahead and just use a for each here. We're going to increment the prefix sum by the actual number in the array. Then what we're going to do is we're also going to check if the prefix sum minus K exists within the actual hash map. And if it does, we're going to go ahead, grab the frequency and add it to our count. Then what we're going to do at the very end, this is the third and the final step is we're just going to add the actual prefix sum with the frequency to the hash map. So looking good, that is pretty much it. What we're going to do next is we're going to return the count and we pretty much be, we pretty much are good to go after this. This is a pretty simple algorithm. It's not too complicated. It's kind of complicated to understand on the surface, but once you get used to it, it's not that complicated. So I'm going to go ahead, get out of full screen mode here, and I'm going to go ahead, toss this into leak code. We're going to see what we get. So bring over leak code, going to paste that into the editor. Let's go ahead and run our tests, make sure our tests are good. Test coming out accepted. Let's hit that submit button, make sure that we're linear. Linear time complexity is linear and our memory linear as well too. Let's see. Yep, linear as well too. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.